Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pastor Sean Stewart. Just want to take a few moments and join you in on this Sunday. We have some great things coming your way, and I want to plug you into your place of freedom. Listen, do me a favor. Click like, click share, get your pen, get your paper, get your Bible. Let's get ready to be free. There's something that's going to be said today that's going to bless your entire life. So come on in, click like, click share, get your Bible, get your pen, get your paper. Let's get ready to be free. While you're getting settled, I want to invite you to join me on September 25th, 2021 at 5 p.m. We will have the elevation and consecration of leaders of the Freedom Nation and along with myself to the office of bishop. There's a flyer that's going to come up. One of our partners is going to post that for you. Please be sure to plug in and join us on September 25th. All roads lead to Houston. If you need hotel information, please take a moment. Go to our website, www.fchouston.org, and you can plug in right there, hotel information. And if you are a pastor, an elder, and you have your robe and you would like to participate in the processional, there's a place right there for you to register. Please do me that honor and that favor. Register so we can be sure we account for enough seats for all of the clergy that will be in the processional to participate. So please take a moment and go in and register for that. Get your hotel room, get to Houston, get ready to be free. I promise you, you will have a high time in the Lord's service. Um, good friend of mine, the Reverend Dr. Uh, right Reverend Bishop Jamarion N. Williams, pastors Unity Missionary Baptist Church right down the street in Baytown, will be our homeless, uh, Dr. Wilson, and uh, Bishop Elena Thompson will be cons uh, chief and co-consecrators. We will be right here in Houston. I promise you, get in this house. Your freedom is waiting on you. While you're getting ready, I want to invite you to join me every Wednesday. My partner in work, my partner in ministry, my partner in Fresh Lens and Freedom, my partner is uh, Pastor Marvetta Walker. We work together as a church and we do Bible study together called Fresh Lens. I would love to be a part of this with you. We are studying a book called The Body Keeps the Score. The Body Keeps the Score. We're digging down into triggers and causes of trauma and what does the medical profession say that it is, then how do we identify it? And then what does the Bible say about that for Christians? How do we come out of trauma? We won't talk about it. And this is a very silent, sustained suffering in the church. We don't talk about trauma in the church like we should. We want you to get healed, but we don't like to talk about what maybe broke us or what caused us to be hurt. This book does that. We have people that are in this group that are trained therapists, trained trauma specialists that are Christians that are sharing in this journey with us every every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Fresh Lens is a Zoom link. All you got to do is go to the church website, www.fchouston.org, plug in right there, and you will be able to see the, the Zoom link right there. Every Sunday, every Sunday, tap your name and say every Sunday, every Sunday, 1 p.m., we will be right here live sharing the fresh freedom word of God right here for your life. We want to be a part of your everyday freedom. So join us every Sunday at one. We will be sharing fresh word, new revelations to you, things that will help you become better at not just becoming free, but staying free. So join us every Sunday, one o'clock p.m. And I know you're like, well, still, I don't have Facebook. That's fine. I thought about you. You, We have access to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All you got to do is go to our website, www.fchouston.org and plug in right there and you will see where you can watch service live. If you join us on YouTube, you can see every sermon that has been preached in Freedom Church over the last nine years from myself, our associate and executive pastors, visiting pastors, all right there. So we would love for you to plug in right there and join us. Also, there's a mailing list we have going on right now. Go to the website, www.fchouston.org, scroll all the way down, subscribe to the uh, the uh, the blast, the uh, MailChimp blast, and all you got to do is put in your email address and we will start sharing with you fresh word, new revelations, just points of freedom, something to keep you going throughout the week, to keep you motivated to do the work of this Christian life, right? So can't wait to see you on one of these events that we have going on. Want to be a part of your everyday freedom. Now, listen, I want to walk you down freedom memory lane. Listen, get your pens and your paper. We're going to bless you real good. 
a couple of years ago, had a chance to share in the pulpit in Dallas, Texas, with my friend, Bishop uh, Will Horn, Cosmopolitan Congregation Church of Dallas, was there, and we shared a sermon called Necessary Friction. We shared with the congregation there, and I do believe that is a fresh word for you on today. Necessary friction. You're trying to figure out why is all of this coming against me? Why am I being pushed? Why is it everything I touch stresses me out? Why is it I'm on the verge of my breakthrough, but I'm experiencing so much resistance? Beloved, you are experiencing necessary friction. Listen, come on in. Let's have a conversation. Check this out. Well, I'll be there. He said, well, no, no, you don't need to come. I said, sir, you're going to do the men's conference Friday. Yes. You're going to preach a funeral Saturday morning. You're not going to sit down Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. You're going to preach out of your mind on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Because you're my brother. You're not going to sit down. You're going to get up and go to work. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And so I said, I'm coming. Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to say my little speech. I'm going to get out of the way so you can rest a little bit. I want to address the theme from yesterday's conference. I, I know Pastor Wood, that's my brother, all the way from Houston. Yeah. And he, he put on this conference last yesterday and Friday, and I promised him last year that I wouldn't miss. So I got up on the road, Ketrick and I came all the way down, and we got here Friday and walked in and surprised him. And so I want to stick to the theme, if that's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. So if you would turn to Proverbs chapter 27, yeah. verse 17. All right. So good to see you. I won't hold you long. I just, I want to see two of the things, and then... I'm going back down 45 for the same. I'm just a little country boy. This is my first time. You know, come on. Come on. This age of metropolis. And, and, and so don't, 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 don't be quiet too long. Like, Proverbs 27. I bring you greetings from the Freedom Church of Houston, Texas. Yes, they, they let me serve as their pastor. When I checked in this morning, I was still the pastor. I was excited about that. And, and when I go back, I got this prophet up. I unleashed in the house. I hope there's something left for me to preach to on next Wednesday. But he's got a good eye, so I'm excited. Proverbs 27 and 17. When you're there, say, I'm there. I'm there. All right. So now I know some of y'all are reading from King James and NIV and NASB. But Pastor Boy, I disagree with all of those verses. Oh, I did. I disagree. <clears throat> And so I want to read from the message Bible. Oh. All right. right. And it reads, you use steel uh -huh. yeah. to sharpen steel. Uh -huh. And one friend sharpens the other. Mm -hmm. Now I know another Bible that says you use iron to sharpen iron. Yeah. And, and one friend to sharpen another. But I like the message Bible. It says you use steel to sharpen steel. And one friend sharpens the other. I want to talk about today Necessary friction. All right. Necessary friction. All right. Necessary friction. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father in heaven, speak to us. Speak through us. Bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Bowie said this theme, and I kind of got tipped with it because champions always look perfect when they're caught in a picture. They never look like they have been through anything because they paint the picture that when you see them, that everything is okay. But when you look at a champion, what you see is their outcome. What you never observed was their process. What I go through to get to this state is not what you see. All you see is my outcome. But if you knew what I went through to get to this state, you would really want to my yes. process. And so I learned that in order for me to be a champion, I must endure necessary friction. I must endure it. Not get away from it, I must endure it. Not run from it, I must endure it. Because the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but the one that endures. So I must endure necessary friction. I like that already. Necessary friction? 
It's something that agitates where you are. It, it irritates your flesh. It aggravates what you're going through. It makes you not want to continue in the process because necessary friction is not made to make you feel good. It's made to make you change. All right. Oh my God. Can you talk right there? I get concerned about people who are uninterested in change. Because how are you going to grow up unless you go through change? Some of us are on the verge of being homicidal and suicidal all at the same time. I'm going to let you know you're going through nothing more than necessary friction. You are the verge of killing yourself and the people that tore up your nerves. You are going through nothing more. Uh -huh. 
perpetuating process yeah. that is not negotiable. All right, all right, all right. I'm not, I know, I know. Wait, we don't get there. We don't get there. So then I said that there were two parts to a champion, that they had an experience, necessary, friction, all right? Uh, so then we got necessary is a predetermined, perpetuated process that is non-negotiable, all right? All right, so let's put down friction. Okay. Friction is the deliberate agitation, yeah. grinding, and resistance yeah. where two forces collide with each other mm -hmm. without separation. All right. All right. All right. So that tells me that necessary friction is a deliberate agitation, predetermined and perpetuated without me having any say so. Somewhere along, yeah, I'll get to the theology before we get to the end. Right, right. But in 1980, the American Psychiatric Association and the third edition of the DSM 4, or the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, yeah. qualified a new term. They said that this term came because a lot of people were experiencing pressures outside of their bodies that they could not deal with. And that when those stresses hit, they were unable to recover and become who God created them. And so they came out with this new term called PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a traumatic event that happened outside of the person. And it kills their inability to be the person God made them. Can I talk to you from What broke you? That caused you to have PTSD. What is your life that caused you not to rest yeah. at night? Yes. What broke you during the day that destroyed you in the night? What is it that you have hit in your life that's causing you to have PTSD? Steve, you're about to talk about something. The one thing the church doesn't like to talk about is depression. Yes. yes. Right. You say, sanctify, Holy Ghost feel, yeah. and protect it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
of my role, mind you. What am I supposed to do with my Using 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 um, 
uh, uh, what is it, Ned? What's the iron. 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 And and I'm okay with that if that's what works for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for me, I like steel. Mm -hmm. After doing a little history check, I learned that when King James wrote that, because iron was the strongest metal that they had at that time. So he couldn't liken that term to anything else but the vocabulary that he had. All right, so then that tells me the reason we subscribe to that is because that was the vocabulary that he had. I don't have to subscribe to the vocabulary that he had because I know better. Sometimes you gotta stop subscribing to other folks' vocabulary. What's funny? We found that in our ability to go through necessary friction, we must engage the power to sustain discovery. Mm -hmm. It is a clear difference between iron and steel. Yes. In essence, iron is an element while steel is an alloy. Yes. Yeah. 
you God's enemy. God's enemy is when you choose not to do better when he gave you the tools All to right. do better. All right. All right. Yeah. God's enemy is when you made a deliberate choice to go against his will and then have a nerve to ask him to, oh, you're going kill me. He knows my heart. As if that is an excuse. So when you learn to lose yourself and get out of your own self with you. Because I'm, I know it costs me, y'all don't have these issues, but that I'm on the other end of 45. I have people who have control issues. I know y'all don't have that here, but, but on my end of 45, I, I got people that have control issues. They have change issues. They have authoritative issues. And so then I put them back in the pot and I bought them. Yeah. 
Right. What you doing here? How you? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you hungry? Yeah, then come on, let me take a pee. You ain't the house I am. Uh, Why are you here? Because I needed to see you for myself. Let me unpack something. Folk was sound rehearse over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> but then when I get to your face, you oh, go, starts to use me and he starts to change that steel and he breaks it out of iron and makes a steel, sometimes we got to be prepared that we might not be able to have everybody around us. Amen. Amen. That's a word. That's a word. That's it. Stop looking for confidence from people who don't have self-esteem. your truth and stop lying about your outcome. Oh, amen. 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 Relationship, not with man, with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Because if you're good at lying to man, relationship with God requires that you deal with what you're hiding. Mm-hmm. Because I help you, I help you out because I mean, y'all really think that you put things up in his head, it's his breath. But the hearts of the Lord are there. So even when you and God is trying to pack it up and hide it, God still sees you. Yes. Yes. Telling someone the truth is not the problem. Telling someone the truth to hurt them is problematic. Mm-hmm. Right. Y'all miss that. Right. 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 Telling somebody the truth is not bad. Telling somebody the truth to hurt them is problematic. Yes. Right. Because we get off at delivering how we feel. We gonna read for I'll tell you what's up. You don't know that you best recognize who I am. You don't want to bring that to me because I will help you recognize who you really are. You because you're standing in front of me with no respect for my anointing. Because he does what you don't like. That's all right. We don't stop talking to God. I mean, y'all sanctified. Y'all don't stop praying. <laughs> because God did something you didn't like. Y'all know y'all don't do that here. But without you, sometimes we get out of feelings. And we get mad with God. We don't talk to God. I mean, because you know, the Bible says talk to God with us. Oh, pray and pray without ceasing. Conduct and communication. <laughs> 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 
Christ-like communications are an expression of affection, not anger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Truth and not fabrication. Mm -hmm. Compassion and not contention. Respect and not ridicule. Yeah. Counsel and not criticism. Yeah. Correction and not condemnation. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right? Yeah. So they are spoken in clarity and not confusion. Yeah. And I got to figure out what you said while you're talking. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So the reason I only got five friends is because I always tell them what I feel. Uh -huh. Up front. In the beginning. Can I be real for a minute? Okay. If you stop letting folk panicking, yeah. Yeah. and you stop letting folk tell you the truth, yes. now I'm gonna just be honest. Don't come ask me to tell you. <laughs> and then you got to pay for the impact. <laughs> So then I call Solomon in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He said, now you was, they say in the Old Testament, bro, they said this about you. They said that in the Old Testament, you was one of the wisest people that were going to the history. That's what they said about you. And so I said, well, Solomon, what are your thoughts about this? He says, well, I left you a note in Proverbs 15 and 32. Mm -hmm. He said, whoever ignores instruction. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go any further, you do know ignoring is a behavioral choice. Yeah. 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 Can I walk you this time? When you start making good choices, you'll start seeing that the toxic things behind you need to stay back right. there. Right. When you start making great choices, you'll realize that the good choices weren't even needed. All right. All right. Yeah. So Solomon says, whoever ignores instruction despises himself. But he who listens to the don't miss that. Is it God? No, no, no. All right, let me go back. He who listens to God gains intelligence. Wow. Yeah. The reason you can't hear God is because you got too much clutter in your ear. Yeah. You got to the best friend with her drama. You got mama drama. You got daddy drama. You got best friend drama. It's in your ear. You got folks who don't understand your relationship, so they hate on your relationship because they're in your ear. The reason your relationship is bad is because you got the wrong people in your ear. The reason your home is not where your is because you got the wrong people in your ear. The reason everything you got is dying because you got the wrong people in your ear. They're like a cancer and a toxicity that's flowing through your body. They're killing everything that's living because you got the wrong things in your ear. Where are you going to get the wrong things? My God. All right. My God. Yes. My God. Because you got to keep those things. Your ear. Then we learn, Second Timothy two three states it this way: that we should do a hardship like a good soldier. But the problem is that the hardship hurts. Yeah. The hardship hurts. I'm done. The hardship hurts. Mm -hmm. The hardship hurts. Yeah. We want to be used, but don't want to. Yeah. I'm here today to tell you that as you go through this iron sharpening iron, that this process is called necessary friction. For you today, you might be on the verge of making a horrible decision. Yes. Because you're in your yes. If that's my day, come on. I just want to pray with you. Oh, yes. 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 I ain't got nothing fancy. Except the shoes. They ain't got nothing fancy. All I got is Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, my God. That's all you need. Baby, maybe you got hurt this week. And the situation was so unbearable, you didn't know. That's you today. Yeah, I'm here for you. That's good. Yes. Jesus. Maybe you got caught up and wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in stuff mm -hmm. and things. And people. And it stressed you and it hurt you and it broke you. And you not even you so shamed you don't even want to remember. But that's you. I'm here just for you. Maybe you have a place in your life you need God to educate, expand, and elevate your life. You need him to enlarge your territory. 
You need God to manifest miracles, signs, and wonders. Not in your best friend life, but in your life. That's you praying that this week. I want to pray with you. Maybe you know the situation that someone else is going And you don't know how to tell them that they're going through necessary friction. That this is only a temporary situation. And you want to stand in the gap for them. That's you. I'm here for you. Maybe you're caught and don't know how to get out. Trapped to a nasty situation. <coughs> Arrested to a person you don't know how to get away from. In prison, in an emotional state. Toxic situation. And you need somebody to come rub iron. Oh no, not here. Yes, sir. Work with you. Need folks to come. Maybe you in the pot. You done melt. Getting in the pot tells me you surrender. You're in the pot. So you surrender. Now you need God to add some elements to you. I need a little grace. I need a little bit more power to endure. I need some strength in this rough storm. He's adding this to you. I need some power to sustain what I'm going through. Yes. If you like me, I don't need another job. I don't need another person. I don't need enough stress. Sometimes what I need is just a little bit of rest. <laughs> Thank you that I have the activities of my things. 
I didn't want the process of change. And so I threw in the towel. And he wasn't worried about the towel. Because he was worried about what's going to throw me in. So instead of me quitting, he you know, I was worse. And so when he saved me, he released me. And when he released me, he said, all I want you to do is just tell me thank you. Thank <laughs> you.